Hello and thanks for watching this video. If you see, want to see more videos like this, visit the website at vanquishsecurity.net. We will find more videos on the virtual lab, networking, security, and security and event incident uh, SIM security event and incident management tools. Today we're going to talk about the ILO 3 for the HP DL 380 G7. Um, the G8 and G9 use ILO 4. We'll have another video about that later on. I've just up upgraded the RAM and the added four hard drives as well. If you see my previous video on the virtual lab overview. I did provide a video there uh, describing the lab, so check that out. So we're going to power on the server. We currently have a USB thumb drive with the HPE service uh, pack for ProLiant or SPP inserted into the server. So once we power on the server We'll boot into that uh, Linux distribution uh, screen, and you have two options with either automatic mode or interactive mode. And we'll be using the interactive mode. This is because it comes interactive mode comes with a uh, RAID diagnostic uh, RAID configuration tools and diagnostic tools for the server. So I want to check out the memory and the hard drives and perform test to make sure they're okay uh, before I start the server and load VMware again. So let's take a look at the ILO 3 interface. So when you first log in uh, you see the overview screen. This gives you the common details like the server name, uh, the product of the appliance, uh, unique user IDs, serial numbers, product IDs, uh, BIOS versions, um, the ROM version. Uh, it talks about your available options to launch the remote console and your license type. And we'll talk about the license here later. It's pretty important for using the remote console. Uh, it gives you a system help status, okay. Uh, the power status and the UID indicator which is a blue light on the front of the server. Um, just remember that the ILO interface uh, the port is separate from the motherboard so if you for some reason you can't access your application or the OS you can bring bring up the remote console and that pre uh, presents a KVM uh, console which is keyboard, video, mouse over the web. And that's useful for, you know, if your server's in a data center far away and you can't get to it, it's suggested to turn on, you know, ILO, configure it, and use the remote console. Uh, let's take a look at some other information here on the system information. Uh, it gives you the summary of all your devices on your server. Fans, temperatures, power supplies, drives, fan redundancy, and power redundancy. And you can also dig down further into the tabs. So you won't see any current information because the power is still or the power is not applied yet. But you can see all the fans, uh, temperatures, power readings, power supply status. Uh, redundant mode the firmware uh, your processors how many memory you have memory modules that are installed this is going to be shown before the upgrade so all these that are not installed I have just added to the server so there's 10 slots uh, I populated them so now I have a max of all 18 slots. Uh, each one is 8 gigs of memory, so that gives me 188 gigabytes of memory total. Uh, you can also install 16 gigs of modules in this server as well. Uh, your onboard NICs, 
and your ILO port. And tells you the drive status as well. Uh, an ILO, it only reports uh, group one. I'm not sure why that is, but probably in fixed in ILO 4. But you can run um, HP tools from VMware to see the current hard drives and their status, or you can run the OS command levels, OS level commands as well. Uh, you have your ILO event log that tells you what's happened, um, whether it's user um, user change or a you know, system issue. Um, Server reset is, you know, power on, power off by a user. Your logins, server power removed. So, SSH sessions, logins, stuff like that. Very useful for troubleshooting issues with appliance for a product. Also have the manage it log, integrated manage it log or IML. Uh, gives you post information, important information. Uh, you have some diagnostic tools. Um, it tells you the status of EEPROM, host ROM, NVRAM, etc. Um, in ILO 4, you have something called an AHS file or Active Health System file that you can actually download and upload to support. Uh, inside Agent, I don't really use that much too much. And we'll go into administration real quick. You can see your current version of your ILO firmware. And we're on the latest version, 1.88 for ILO 3. And as simple as downloading the ILO file, browse to it, and select the location, and hit upload. And it does reset the ILO after it updates. So you may see receive an unresponsive web page uh, until it comes back up. So very simple to do that. You need the enterprise or advanced license to use the remote console. Uh, if you don't have the advanced license and have the basic license, then uh, you won't be able to use the remote console or any of the enterprise features. So uh, local users and the groups, access settings. For SSH, uh, your SSL ports 80 and 443, and virtual media port by default 17983, which is when you select ISO files to deliver via the remote console to the server. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, access options, idle timeout, uh, accessing the ROM based setup utility. Um, you can tell it to show the IP, ILO, ILO inter IP address there in post, and other options there, server name, FD, FQDN, IP address, and authentication failure options. Uh, you can create a SSH key or generate one by default. You can load SSL certs. And you have LDAP authentication, you could use that for your environment. Uh, turn it into FITS mode and display the cipher negotiated at the time. And you also enable single sign on as well with trusted certs with your users. Uh, change remote console key settings, uh, trust settings, etc. Create a login security banner. Under the management, you can enable ILO SNMP alerts and send it to an SNMP listening device. You can forward insight manager alerts and SNMP pass through. Uh, configure your destination there. 
and this is Insight Manage Integration. That's a uh, add-on tool HPE offers. So under the network, we have the ILO dedicated network port and a shared network port. You probably won't use that too much. Um, if you do, just check out the ILO 3 user guide. It's online on the web. On the ILO dedicated network port, you have IPv4 options and IPv6. Uh, assign your address, mask, and gateway. Uh, I'm not using IPv6. I disabled it. I believe it's on by default. Uh, network interface in use, host names, MAC address of the interface. Um, host name, domain name, uh, NIC information. Most of the time you can turn on auto if it's one gig switch ports or you can assign it manually if you're using an older switch for 10 or 100 meg, half and full. Uh, you can enable DHCP for your ILO and it's important when you first use ILO with a new appliance uh, it's going to be DHCP will be on by default so when you plug in a cable it'll make a DHCP request and you'll have to check out your DHCP server role and see what IP address was assigned and you can verify that by the MAC address um, other IPv4 settings, the gateways, static routes, DNS servers, and WIND servers can be set. And you can also enable simple network transfer protocol if you need that. And specify an NTP time server as well. Under the power management, You have just the same buttons as you see on the front of the server. So I momentarily press, we'd be pushing it for a second and let it go. You have auto power on option, which it's not recommended. And you also can set power on delays as well. It'll also ILO will monitor the power usage in graphs, watts, volts, power histories, 5, 20, and 24 hour times. And you can change minimum average peak cap etc change your watch to BTU per hour on your graphs um, power regulator settings since I am using VMware ESXi I allowed the host OS which would be VMware to control the power you can also change your dynamic power settings if you want to see uh, static, low power, high performance. Uh, it's really based around energy efficiency. Um, so max power 920 watts. Uh, peak observed was 375 watts historically. And minimum was 73 watts. So, And if you want to enable SMP alerts on your power thresholds, you can do that as well. Specify your wattage thresholds or duration. Under the virtual media, uh, you can change your media port there. I was telling you, you can upload ISO files through the remote console to the OS. So some of the legacy, legacy features are the virtual floppy, if you have one, CD, DVD, ROM. You can also change your boot order. So if you want to Search for a CD, DVD, ROM drive first. On this server, I don't have a DVD drive. And the next one would be USB, which I have inserted the USB drive. And that should be detected next. Then your hard drives, NIC, and the floppy. All right, on the remote console, uh, some of the requirements are you have Microsoft.NET Framework 3.5 or later on your PC installed to be able to use the .NET remote console. Uh, if you have Java enabled in your browser and you can use the Java version, 
uh, open JDK toolkit. And this specifies here the latest version tested with ILO for ILO 3, the GRE version 8 update 65. So that'll be your minimum requirement for using Java. And you can also use a mobile app if you have one set up for it. So I always use .NET Framework 3.5, it's much easier to use. And you can set your keys, for your hotkeys, if you need to press a certain amount of keys, like you are in front of the keyboard, you can create those hotkeys. So that about covers ILO 3. I'll have a future video on ILO 4. Uh, part 2 of this video, I will show you the power on sequence with the USB thumb drive and running the SP, SSP, SPP uh, tool to update the firmware and run diagnostics on the new hardware we just added. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks.